I realize that last time we talked about which parts of the U.S. tend to have unusual, well not unusual, accents that are a little different from what we call general American and we started off by talking about which part of the U.S.? We talked about the East Coast and New England, right? Someone said New Jersey, I said yeah that's about the right place and then moving up into New England and in addition there's another portion of the country that has uh, an accent or a, ser or it's a collection of accents that are quite different from general American and what part of the country is that? What parts? The South, yeah we put it in the notes. <clears throat> we kind of got off on a tangent when we were talking about it. It's the South and the South extends from Maryland, the southern part of Maryland which is around, uh, it's right next to Washington DC going south all the way to Florida. Florida has a lot of people who move there from the north why is that? Why would Florida have a lot of people from the north? What's the weather like in Florida? Warm and sunny. Warm and sunny, right. And what's the weather like in the north? In the winter it's cold, in the summer it's great. Uh, yeah, in the winter it gets very cold. So a lot of people move to Florida when they retire. So there are a lot of people from all over the country in Florida, so Florida does have a southern accent, but it's got a lot of people who are not from the area living there. So from Maryland down to Florida with exceptions, then moving west all the way to Texas. That whole area, there are many different kinds of southern accents. There is not just one southern accent. And black English also is not just one accent, but black English in general has a lot in common with Southern English. We believe it's because the Southern states is where slavery was legal and then blacks moved out from the South to other parts of the country after the emancipation of the slaves, started new lives elsewhere. A lot moved out before then, a lot of them escaped. So we have mainly New England, the East Coast, they have a, a lot of different accents that are not quite like Midwestern English. Then we've got that whole South that has many different varieties of Southern English. Why are these two areas a little bit different from the rest of the country? Because starting from about, say, Pennsylvania and Indiana, Ohio, going all the way west, there are some variations. However, the speech is largely Xiaoyi. It's more the same than it is different. And that's Midwestern English, what I would just call Midwestern, standard Midwestern English. Why would that be? Why would there be a clump of different accents in the east and then a clump of different accents in the south and the rest is kind of mostly the same or very similar? Why would that be? Why would that be? What's the reason? Anybody? What do we need for a country or a language area, let's call it, to develop different dialects. What is necessary for that to happen? Yeah. Isolation, Isolation plus? Possibly, but the most important thing is what? How do different varieties of language develop? Um, different, immigrants. different immigrants, they can change a dialect too or you know, an accent, that's right. But what's the most important factor in language change, in any kind of language change? Nobody got the hint? I'm not just nervous about the time. <laughs> it's time, right? Because I've read that it takes at least 50 to 100 years for a language to develop different varieties. Now do you feel that the Mandarin spoken in Taiwan is pretty it's identifiably different from the Mandarin you hear spoken on the China mainland. Is it different enough to tell the difference? The Mandarin spoken in Taiwan, if you compare it to the Mandarin that you hear in the media or in your travels in mainland China, can you tell that there's a difference? That's right, okay. So first of all, when they came over, it was a group of people 
that didn't necessarily speak standard Beijing Mandarin. They came from all parts of China and from that developed what we call now Taiwan Mandarin. And so it's been how many years now? Since 1949. It's been enough time that there has been considerable change. Is it mutually intelligible? Can you understand each other pretty easily? Yes. My experience was when I went to China, there's almost no communication gap. It's very, very easy to understand each other. However, sometimes you will have more confidence than you should. Sometimes you think you understand and you didn't understand. That happens. That happens with American and British English. But in general, there is mutual intelligibility. Not much problem to communication if they're speaking Northern Mandarin. If they speak dialects, that's another matter. But since 1949 to the present has been many decades, so there is already a fairly different variety of Mandarin spoken in Taiwan. So how about the states now, going back to our original question? Why, why is that great variety, variation in dialects, mostly East Coast New England and South? Why is that? Why should the way we speak in Minnesota not be so different from the way they speak in California? It's a lot of distance, right? The states is pretty big. What's the reason? Going back to time, does that give you a hint? Anybody? Is there any time differential between the East Coast and South compared to the Midwest and the West? Where would time come in as a factor? How long has the U.S. been settled? First started being settled when? The U.S. In the what century? 17th century they started settling the U.S., right? The 1600s. And it became a country in the 18th century. But did the whole country just plop become a country at the same time? No. What part of the country developed earlier? And the, that's, that's it. Do we got it now? Do, we see where, do you see where we're going with this? That part of the country started being settled earlier. So there has been more time for more dialects to develop. The rest of the country, you know, opening up the Wild West, that came later. And it's a bit more homogeneous, okay? So that's that. We started something we didn't finish, and I wanted to finish that this time. And... Now we're going to go straight to, oh, there's something else I want to mention. And that is that I put a link up in, uh, for today on the first page of our website. And there is a very interesting website that shows dialect differences in the U.S. For example, how do you say qi shui in English? This is the most popular word for identifying U.S. dialects, or I would say it is anyway. How do you say qi shui in American, in American English? Soda, right, but that's not the word I said that I used when I was a kid. I'm from Minnesota. Anybody know what word I used? Pop, that's right. When I was a kid, it was always pop, until people started making jokes about my saying pop. They thought it was funny. They thought it was very provincial. How tua, you say pop. Well, I don't think we even need to talk about pop, and certainly not to drink it, but after that, I realized that to be a little bit more uh, cosmopolitan, uh, I should say soda. So I switched it to soda, but I still have to think. It comes faster now, but for me it's still pop underneath. So you can divide up the country according to whether they prefer saying soda or pop or a fizzy drink. Fizzy is a pop pop de. These don't taste. Or Coke. A Coke is a brand name, but a lot of people call all kinds of taste Coke, especially in the South. So if you're interested in that, the results of that survey, just go to this link, and you will see a lot of interesting information about American English, which in general is fairly homogenous. We see, I mean, we hear pretty much, uh, we don't have that huge amount, uh, uh, we don't have a huge amount of, of, of variation in American English, but there are some words where there is a lot of variation. For example, the word for tong, zi shui tong. I grew up calling it a pail. A lot of people call it a bucket. And there are other words that I can't even remember well because I don't use them. So it's got a whole bunch of vocabulary words and also pronunciation. Some people don't distinguish between pin and pen 
especially in the South, and also in black English, pin and pen. So they say ink pin if they mean B. Okay? And then pin is a stick pin. So they have to add a modifier because they both sound like pin. There are a lot of words uh, that identify different areas, and they'll show you what parts of the country use them. Okay, that's that. Now we're going on to our textbook, and we're also going to learn the different parts uh, of the vocal tract. So I think I'm going to put this down because we're going to be using it soon. And then we're going to refer to, uh, to the web page that has the picture of the head on it. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to learn the parts of the vocal tract. Okay? All right, we don't want it too dark because we need people to be able to see the textbook. And we're going to pick up from where we left off which is on page four. We're in the middle of the paragraph, and that is reader number four, who is Di Si Hao. Over here. Okay, you're starting over here. Go ahead. So continue from where you left off. Because Wendy, <coughs> you will find that you can do it, but it is much harder than talking when breathing out. When okay. you talk, air from the lungs goes up in the, goes up the wide wind pad. The Goes up the way? Windpipe. Windpipe, good. Windpipe. The trachea, to use the more technical term. That's good. And you said trachea. There's an old pronunciation that's trachea, and that's going to come up in an exercise in the book later on. But the way we say it now is trachea. That's right. And it just means qi guan. And um, after trachea, we have punctuation, which is what? Have your notes ready now. I mean, you're going to be taking notes. Have your notebooks open and ready. All right, comma is a very common kind of punctuation. What information does a comma give us? What does a comma tell us to do? Pause. And then in a previous class, I mentioned uh, we're going to have to uh, learn a couple of terms here. First of all, it doesn't matter if it's a compound or a phrase. Or clause, The last stress in an utterance. Utterance just it My former students know this. New students pay special attention. It's called tonic stress. Tonic is the adjective for tone. So anytime you have a stretch of speech. 它就是自成一格,它就是自己有连贯性,然后到这里为止. It's of a certain length, and you stop there for a while. The final stress in that utterance 会特别高. This is a very, 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 very important rule of English intonation that you need to know. The final stress of an utterance is very high. It's called the tonic stress. So, for example, I'm going to the store. I'm going to the store. It's going to be especially high because it's the last stress in that unit of speech. That's called, the t that's called tonic stress. So when you're getting to the end of a group, a thought group we call it, a thought group, that's an easy way to refer to it. A lot of books call it that. It's a thought group. Just a thought group. When you come to the end of a thought group, Get ready to make your voice go up. Not just any last word, the whole thing, or whatever. It's the final stress. But the final stress of a thought group is very high. That's the tonic stress. However, if we're not done with the whole sentence, we have to use another kind of intonation that we mentioned last time called the continuation rise. So, <clears throat> this is really addition. We have a high stress because of tonic stress, but we also need to go up because we have a continuation rise coming. Is that right? So, we get a pattern like this. I went to the store to buy some bread. It's going down. But I went to the store to buy some bread, and then, jishu. Bread, if we're not finished. We go high. If we're finished, we go down. But if we're not finished, we start high, go down, and then 
come up a little bit with a continuation rise. This is extremely important because you're reading from a text and there's going to be lots of commas and semicolons and other punctuation that tell you either we need a final fall or we need a high pitch, a drop, a little rise because we need a continuation rise. I'm taking time to say this because it's just going to come up over and over and over again when you're reading. Whenever you see punctuation, you probably have to do something with your voice. Go up high, go low, rise, fall, pause, you have to do something. So watch for punctuation, it's giving you a lot of information. Now here, it's only two words, the trachea, but we're not done. Because we're not done, we have to trachea, but we're not done, so we go down and come up again. The trachea, to use the more technical term, and into the larynx, we're going to keep on doing that till we finally get to the period. Semicolon, you shows again period, you can also, you often usually fall at a semicolon, then how? Okay, so I'm taking the time because what often happens, I found in the past, is students are in a race to run through the text and show how fluent they are and how fast they read. We don't want that. You shouldn't read especially slow, but remember to put in the pauses, the tonic stress, the continuation rise, the final falls, etc. Think first before you read, and then it'll come out right, and we won't take a lot of t uh, class time mentioning it. You'll all pick it up over time, but if you spend time thinking about it now and practicing, we'll get it faster. Okay? So the trachea, the trachea, to use the more technical term, and it and into the larynx. Larynx. <laughs> larynx. Okay, I don't say larynx. It's not wrong. People on the East Coast do say that. I'm going to train you in my dialect because I want you to learn one consistent kind of dialect. And if I say larynx and you say larynx, you're going to get in the habit of making up your own pronunciation. I want you to speak like I do for this academic year in this class. Just because I would like you to learn one consistent variety so that you learn to imitate whatever you hear. And you don't bring in these old pronunciations from before. So in the, in the Midwest, we say larynx. We don't say larynx. Okay? In Midwestern, we don't distinguish between those two in this position. So larynx. Everybody, larynx. Larynx. Okay. Um, okay, go ahead. Larynx. At which point it must pass between two small muscular folds? Pause. All right. Two small muscular folds. Folds. New rule, put this in your notes, please. Why did I slow down so much? What I originally heard you say was two small muscular folds. Is that easy to understand? Are these content words or function words? Content words, that's right. When you have content words, especially in series, and they have only one syllable, we need to put a pause after them instead of reading straight through quickly. Instead of saying between two small muscular folds, we need to say between two small muscular folds. There are two reasons why we do this. The first one I just told you, because they are content words, they contain a lot of meaning. Our brain needs more time to process content words than what? Function words, they go in faster because they're short and they're actually part of the grammar. They're more part, a part of the grammar than the vocabulary of content words. Okay, so often they have a grammatical function, so they're going more towards grammar. But here we're going towards vocabulary and content. It's got more content, so our brain needs more time to process it. That's the first thing. The second thing is, this is an important rule that you need to write down too. In English, we have something called stress timing. Some people say it's a myth, you know, that it's, it doesn't exist in reality, but it's a very useful concept. So we have stress timing. And the opposite of this is syllable timing. 
Now these are not 绝对的现象 but they're tendencies, and like I said, they're useful. The example usually given for syllable timing is French. For example, uh, je suis une étudi étudiante française. Je suis une étudiante française. Da, 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 da. Every syllable is about equal in length. At least that's the feeling when we're listening. Da, 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 da. But that's not the way English works. English has stressed words, stressed syllables, and unstressed syllables between them. So we have a rhythm that's sort of like da 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 da. And because of that, we have a different timing for each syllable. Which syllables are longer, the stressed ones or the unstressed ones? The stressed ones are longer. So stressed is long, unstressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, unstressed. It's not that regular, but that's the general idea. The stressed syllable is long, the unstressed syllables are short, but they also are a 环重地带 between the stressed syllables. 从这个 stress 到那个 stress 会构成一个 rhythm,、uh, 一个 rhythm. So da 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 da. It'll be something like that. So what we like to do is we 我们希望这个 stress 到那个 stress 到那个 stress 间隔都差不多，中间可以塞很多的。没有中音的音节，可以很少，也可以没有。So， 塞很多的 unstressed syllable 的时候 ，what are we going to do？ If we make each one equally long， 这个 stress 到那个 stress， 这个间隔会太长。So what do we do if we have lots of unstressed syllables between two stressed syllables？ What do we do？ We link and also 那些 unstressed syllables 会压缩。会更小更短 ，so da 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 da。so 如果很多的话会变得很短，如果很少会长一点，如果没有的话呢 ，what do we put there？ A big black bear。What did I do？ I didn't say a big black bear。A big black Bear. There are no unstressed syllables between those stressed syllables. So what did I do? Paused. All right. This is the lesson that I'm trying to get at in stopping you. So whenever I stop you when you're reading, it's usually because there's a bigger lesson that we need to know. Put it in your notes and then make sure that you hand them in next week. I will collect your notes later. Okay. So whenever you find their content words, 连续几个 content words， 然后都有重音 ，right? Content words 本身就有重音了，通常。中间没有一大堆没有中音的音节，那那样的话，中间就需要放 pause. So you don't read through it quickly, and that comes back to the example here that got us on this topic in the first place. Between two small muscular folds, got it? Two pause, small pause, muscular, muscular. 后面有两个没有中音的音节，可以把它填起来。Two. Small muscular folds. 有没有发现？哒哒哒哒。如果只注意有重音的音节，节拍还蛮均匀的。Too small muscular folds. 那就不行了。Okay, got it. Try it. Between two small muscular folds. 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 Right. Called the vocal folds. 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 Yeah. Okay, it's not folds. This is Ozo the O fold. Everybody, make sure you're saying O folds. Now, folds, you know, means 折把东西折起来 right? But folds here means 一片肉 That's what it means. A fold of flesh. 这是一片肉的意思 So we have two, two,、uh, two pieces of flesh, basically two strips of flesh here that come together, that open, that close, that open, that close. Usually, 呃，一般人那个俗称是 vocal cords， 听过吗？声带 vocal cords， but in phonetics we usually call them vocal folds， 就是这样子术语的不同。So vocal folds is what we usually call 声带 in English instead of vocal cords. Vocal cords is not wrong,、uh, but we're just going to start calling them vocal folds now. So watch out for the vowel o, vocal folds, and second, also watch out for the stress. 这个是。
复合词的重音。Vocal 虽然是形容词，可是 vocal folds 的重音就像复合名词。Vocal folds and anything 前面只要有 vocal， 差不多就是这种重音。So get ready for that. Vocal folds, vocal cords. Okay, vocal training 都是前面有 vocal， 后面就是没有重音。In most cases. So, um, vocal folds. Watch the vowel. Watch the stress. Uh, go ahead. If the vocal folds are apart, as you're probably as what? As. As. As yours. Yours. Z. Z. Our 后面的 s 是 z， 不是 s。Yours. 你的，不是你。就像。不是不是像你一样，是像你的 vocal folds 一样。Go. As yours probably. As yours. As yours probably are not right now. Mm -hmm. Right now. Now. Mm -hmm. While you are breathing in and out. Good in. Good. Everybody, I in in. in. 不要念 in. In 有两个错，一个是母音是 e 不对啊，应该是 e。第二个是 n 点的 n， 不是应该的 in。So don't say in， say in in。n 点的 n 换个母音 n in。Okay， and uh breathing in and out。Uh keep going。The air from the lungs will have a relative relatively free passage。Free passage。Free 后面 pass 就刚刚讲的这个道理啊。Free passage。Free passage。Free。Free passage. Okay, free. 后面稍微 pause 一下，因为那个是一个有重音的一个实词，所以后面 pause 一下，记得吗 ？A relatively free passage. Good. Yeah. Into the pharynx, into the pharynx and the mouth. But if the vocal folds are folds, 不是 folds, folds, folds. Uh huh. But if the vocal folds are adjusted. So that adjusted pause. Are adjusted so that there is only a narrow passage between them. Between them, mm -hmm. just like that little song here. Well, let's put the song back. What I call the little song is a tonic stress, a fall, and a continuation rise. Mm -hmm. We'll just call it the little song. Go ahead. Between them. The air stream from the lungs will set them vibrating. From the lungs, from the lungs. You mean the words? Yeah. Will set them vibrating. All right. This is an important word. We say it the whole year. Where is the stress? 第一个音节有重音，不要念 vibrating. Everybody, vibrating. Vibrate. Vibrate. Vibrates. Vibrated. Vibrating. Vibrating. 可是名词 vibration. vibration. Yeah, 要记得只有名词重音在第二个音节 So vibrates, vibrating 等等 Go on. Well, settle and vibrating. Good. Sounds produced when the vocal folds are vibrating are said to be voiced. Voiced. To be voiced. 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 Right.、Uh, to be voiced.、Hmm? You're saying voiced. It's voice. Hmm. 听起来有点呆哈 Voice. But it sounds beautiful in English. I'm sorry. Voiced. 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 Because we're not done. Hmm. We're saying, wait, don't interrupt me. I'm not done. Voiced. Everyone. Voiced. Exactly. Voiced. Voiced. Good. Are said to be voiced. Good. As opposed to. Apo. Oh, was opposed. Apo. As opposed to the those. Pause.、Mm -hmm. In which the vocal folds are apart. Apart. Apart.、Mm -hmm. Which, which are said to be voiceless. Very good. All right. This paragraph contains a lot of information that we can't really. Imagine yet we can't really visualize yet because we need to learn the parts of the vocal tract which we're going to do right away. Voiced and voiceless. What you learned in school for voiced is 有声 right, and for voiceless is 无声 But in my training in Chinese linguistics, for voiced we say 带音，系带的带，声音的音，带音 
Another term you can use, also used in Chinese linguistics a lot, is zhuo, qing zhuo de zhuo. Zhuo yin is voiced. Dai yin is voiced. You sheng is voiced. I say you sheng when I think people don't know the other terms, but in this class I'll probably use dai yin more often. And therefore, voiceless would be what? Bu dai yin. Bu dai yin is voiceless. Did somebody forget to turn off their cell phone? Oh, okay. All right, so voiceless is bu dai yin. And instead of wu sheng, it gets a little confusing. So we're going to use bu dai yin, voiced and voiceless. And in Chinese linguistics, they say qing. Yeah, qing chu, the qing is voiceless, zhuo is voiced. But most often I'll say dai yin for voice, bu dai yin for voiceless. Okay, we started learning this the very first class when we had a few, like half a minute left till the bell rang. So this time we're going to learn all of them. Starting from the easy ones that we started last time, everybody, upper lip, upper lip. lower lip. All right, remember these, we're going to learn a bunch of them and then review them and do them backwards and forwards. So the thing is to just memorize them, but not in a very painful way because I've heard people in Yugai tell me that the students have a terrible time with phonology and memorizing all that stuff. If you just do it sort of as a game called concentration, that means remembering where things are and what they're called, it's not painful at all because a lot of them, some of the terms are already familiar like lips. So one more time, this is the... Very good. Another easy pair. Upper teeth. Upper teeth. Lower teeth. Lower teeth. All right, so we've got those. And this big fat thing here we now know is the tongue. Make sure everyone learns how to say it correctly in English, because like I said, it gets mixed up with ton and tone, which are totally different. So tongue is like, again, in Chinese, tong tong the tongue, tong ai the tongue. But open your mouth wider to get a different, a slightly different vowel. So instead of tongue in Chinese, it's tongue. Tongue. Good, just open your mouth wider for the vowel and you'll get it. Tongue. 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 Beautiful. Say it that way, don't say ton or tone or anything else like that, okay? Now, uh, here's another part that's extremely important because many, many sounds in English and many other languages use this part of the vocal tract to produce sounds, like for T and N and S, they're all produced here. In Chinese, this bone that sticks out behind your upper teeth is called chi yin long gu. In Chinese, you might want to write down the Chinese, chi yin long gu. We call it chi yin for short. Chi yin, when we say chi yin, we mean this part. Chi yin long gu, long shi, xin long lu de long. Okay, chi yin long gu or chi yin. And sang chun, xia chun, sang chi, xia chi, that's no problem. In English, it's called alveolar ridge. Now, you see an O here in British English? I believe they say, they say alveola. Alveola, so in shi. And some in American say alveolar, yo ge uh. But I've always said alveolar. So that's the way we'll say it here. Alveolar. Alveolar. 这是个形容词,所以后面有重音. Ridge是一个突出来的地方, like this is a ridge sticking out from the desk. Ridge. Alveolar ridge. Not ridge, don't say ridge, it's ridge. Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Good. Alveolar ridge. Say it five times in a row. Say it mindfully, thinking while you're saying it and saying it clearly and thinking of where it is in the vocal tract, the part here in the drawing, okay? Alveolar ridge, five times. Alveolar ridge, alveolar ridge, alveolar ridge, alveolar ridge, alveolar ridge. Make sure you're voicing it. Don't say alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge, once more, ridge. Alveolar ridge. Yes, that sounds better. Okay. So now we've got all of this stuff covered up to here. Let's just keep going behind the alveolar ridge. In Chinese, this part is called yin e. Often you just call it shang e. That's more general. We're going to make it a little more specific. This hard part right in the roof of your mouth, that's called in Chinese yin e in English, 
hard palate. Hard 也是形容词，所以 palate 也有重音。除非跟 soft palate 有对比。We'll talk about that in a minute. So in English, it's hard palate. Try it. Hard palate. Hard palate. Not heart. 不是 excuse me, I just 我在拍那个麦克风。<laughs> okay, 不是心脏。Hard 很硬，因为有骨头，所以很硬。Not hard palate. It's hard. D, 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 d. Everybody hard. Hard. Good. Hard palate. Hard palate. Not heart. Some of you are saying heart. 不是心脏。Hard. Hard. Good. Hard palate. Hard palate. That sounds better. So. 硬的那个上颚，硬颚。If you keep on going back, you find that there's no more bone; it gets soft. Is that right? And if you stick your finger into that part of your vocal tract, you'll feel like throwing up, right? If you want to make yourself throw up, for example, if you've eaten something bad, you touch that part; it'll make you throw up. So、uh, that part is called the soft palate. Now I said that palate is stressed. 它独就是独立出现的时候 ，hard palate 都有重音。可是 soft palate palate 的部分是重复的。当我们有重复的那个重复的部分是没有重音的。所以 hard palate soft palate 那是因为有对比的关系。Hard 跟 soft 不一样，重复的那个部分是没有重音。The part that's repeated is distressed. So 两个一起讲的时候 ，we're not going to stress it. Everybody hard palate, hard palate. soft. Palate. Soft palate, and the soft palate in Chinese is called ruan e. That's easy to remember. So we're going to do the upper part of the vocal tract here, starting from the upper lip. Everybody, just say, I don't have a pointer here. I have one, but I left it in another classroom.、Um, maybe I'll use a pen. That helps a little bit. Because I stand in front, it will turn into a blue ink. Okay, everybody, go. Beautiful. Once more. Good. Alveolar ridge. 不是 alveolar ridge. 不对哦，因为那是形容词加名词，是普通的片语动词。呃，不是片语动词，这是普通的片语。It's just regular phrasal stress. 所以 alveolar ridge, ridge 比较高，因为有 tonic stress 的关系。So don't say alveolar ridge. 不对 ，alveolar ridge. Everyone. Good. Watch the R and alveolar. We're speaking General American, so we have very clear R's. Remember your R's, please. Okay, alveolar ridge. And it's not alveolar. It's a V. It's a V. 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 Once more, alveolar ridge. There we go. We've got it. Let's try it again. Go. Good. Okay. This part has bone places. And then here is the very good. This whole area up here, it looks blank, but it's filled with sponge-like tissue. Sponge-like 就是海绵，海绵状的一些组织。海绵组织 is what you will call it. 海绵组织 It's spongy tissue that fills your nasal cavity, and you can see it's labeled there. Nasal is nose, the 形容词 Nasal, s n i n z o, nasal cavity, 跟 vocal folds 一样，好像个复合名词。Cavity 没有重音，所以哪些有重音，哪些没有重音，请大家留意。Nasal cavity, go. Nasal cavity. Good. Cavity 不是蛀牙，是腔，鼻腔，有口腔，有鼻腔，这是鼻腔。Now, what does the nasal nasal cavity do? When we have nasal sounds like hmm, hmm, the air comes through your nose, not through your mouth, and 那个海绵组织，它会稍微改变一下那个音值，会有一个很特别的一种共鸣。So we get a special tone when the sound goes to the nasal cavity. 然后海绵它是不是吸收力很强？这是它的特色。它吸收水的能力很强，它吸收声音的那个能力很强。所以从鼻子出来的声音会闷闷的，没有那么大声。所以啊，嗯，比较闷 ，right? There are other reasons for that, but a lot of the sound is getting absorbed,、uh, excuse me, absorbed by the spongy tissue. So that's the nasal cavity. Now we've covered the whole upper part of the vocal tract. 
So let's go backwards. Oh, no, we've got one more. What is this down here? If you open your mouth wide, and then if you watch cartoons, you'll see a funny drawing of this. That's called the uvula. Uvula. In Chinese, it's called the xiao she. Little tongue. Xiao she. Xiao she. Okay? Everyone, uvula. 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 Mm -hmm. So you all know that's xiao she. Let's go backwards now. Let's practice uvula three times and then go backwards. Everybody, uvula three times. Uvula, uvula, uvula. Good. You can say uvula, but usually it's uvula. Le, le, 就好了。快乐的乐，不说。Okay, so let's go backwards. I'll point. You give the name of the organ. Good. Okay, we've got a huge chunk of what we need to know, the terms that we need already memorized. We're now going to look at parts of the tongue because often if we say tongue in many languages, it's the same meaning as language because tongue is the most important organ used to produce speech, right? 它扮演的角色是所有的那个器官里面是最重要的角色，它是主角。For that reason, we're going to have to divide the tongue up into smaller areas because each one will be used to produce a slightly different sound or maybe a very different sound. But they're easy to memorize. The very, very front part of the tongue, 舌尖 is called the tip of the tongue. Everyone, tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue. All right, we're talking about tongue, so we're not going to say of the tongue every time now. We'll just say the first word of the name of the part. The next part in Chinese is called the leaf of the tongue, 叶舌叶 but in English it's called 刀刃刀片 It's the blade. Everybody, blade. blade. The tongue blade or blade of the tongue. 都可以 For now, we'll just say blade. Everybody, blade. blade. Tip. Tip. Blade. blade. All right. Now here's a very very 很专业的一个术语 front. Okay. 好专业前 All right. 舌前 In Chinese, so 舌尖、舌叶、舌前 everybody front. front, front of the tongue. Front of the tongue. Good. And they didn't label it, but here we've got center. We're missing the center. Center of the tongue. The center. 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 And 另外一个很专业的 back 舌后 yeah 舌中、舌前、舌后 the back of the tongue. Everybody back. Okay, that was the bell. But let's review the parts of the tongue. We've got one more that's not written here, but I'll tell you in a minute. So this is the tip. And that's front. Front. Good. Once more, this is the. Uh huh. Root. Shogun. Now, in Chinese usage, shogun and shogun. Is often used to mean 舌前跟舌后。舌根其实是很深的地方。But in Chinese, when we say 舌根 we usually mean English, the the back of the tongue. So in English, the back 经常等于中文的舌根。可是实际上 the root 舌根真正的 root 是在这里，是很深的地方，没有那么常用到。Keep that in mind. And when we say、uh, the front of the tongue. In Chinese, we usually say 舌尖 Sometimes it's 舌尖 sometimes it's 舌前中文常常比较笼统 Not the no no insult to Chinese. 这是习惯用法的问题 So keep in mind when we say 舌根 usually what we mean is 舌后 So when speaking Chinese, we will try to be more precise. And when we mean back of the tongue, we'll say 舌后 and not 舌根舌根 will be root. Okay, that got us all down、uh, down to here. That takes care of the whole tongue. We'll do the rest after break. So everybody, break time. We're going to continue with the parts of the vocal tract. We just reviewed the upper part. I'm not going to do it again. It sounds like you've got it. We also know the names of all the parts we've learned in Chinese, right? Now we're working on the tongue. We covered all the parts of the tongue. Let's go over those again. This is the. Front, not front. Front. Yeah, good. Once more. 
Again? Uh huh. Backwards. All right, now you know the parts of the tongue. Now, when you hear those people complaining about these are really hard to learn, do they seem hard to learn to you? You're doing fine. You're learning very fast. So not a problem, I don't think. Now we're going to go to the part that has more new, new names probably for you, although not all of them will be new. First of all, this, this one is not directly connected with speech. This is the esophagus. Esophagus in Chinese is 食道. That's what we use to get the food in our mouths to, the, to our stomachs, OK? So that's the 食道. Everybody, esophagus. 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 OK, so that takes care of that. All right, but not that. That's 已经不是了。从这个地方以下,那才算是esophagus,因为这上面是都共用的食物。跟那个饮料,跟呼吸,讲话,全部都是共用的,这个地方以下. All right, what's next? Here there's an unusual organ that you may not be familiar with. If you go down to the very bottom of the root of the tongue, 有一片肉会上上下下的. If you look at it in a film, and we're going to look at one soon, some people think it's the tongue, 因为扁扁的,我们想象中的那个tongue,它就像这个样子. 真正的汤不是那个样子. It's called the epiglottis in English. In Chinese, anybody know what it's called? It's a Got it? Uh huh. Louder? No, it's a hotel. That's lower. But that's a nice guess. Huh? There we go. It's a very strange name. One year we had a big discussion online about where we got the name Hui Yan. Somebody found and I don't remember it very well, but never mind. Okay, epiglottis Hui Yan. Just remember that. Kai Hui the Hui, Tao Yan the Yan, Hui Yan. What does it do? It flaps up and down. When we are breathing, it's open. When we're talking, it's open. When do you think it's going to close? When we're eating, drinking, swallowing. When we're eating and drinking and swallowing, it closes over the trachea, over the windpipe. And it protects it from food going into the lungs. Now, I've read that it doesn't, it's not really necessary. 就会保护你的气管,不会进食物. But this is another protection. This will flap shut whenever you swallow. So it's open when you're breathing and speaking, closes when you're eating and drinking and swallowing. So this is the epiglottis, hui yin. It will cover up the trachea, okay, when we need it to. Uh, the trachea, again, that's the cheek one. Let's review that. Trachea. 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 Good. All right, and this whole area is called the pharynx. This is called the pharynx. In Chinese, it's called yin, yin ho de yin. Yin gen ho si liang ge bu wei. Pharynx jiu si larynx, because the L huan cheng ph. L huan cheng ph jiu si pharynx. But we often don't call it pharynx directly. We make it into an adjective, and we call it we call it the pharyngeal wall. Pharyngeal wall is the B, the B, yin B. This is this whole area of tissue behind, just below the B, chang, behind the tongue, behind the soft palate. This is this, That's yin. Then, this yin B. That's the pharyngeal wall. We'll need that word a lot, so it's important. So pharyngeal wall, 要加上去, So everybody, first of all, pharynx. pharynx. Not fa. I don't say fa. I say fa. Middle East. I said Middle East. Midwest. Pharynx. 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 Gongping, the nigga fair. Fair, fair. It's hang gongping. Pharynx. Good. The adjective is pharyngeal. Beautiful, perfect. Pharyngeal wall. Pharyngeal wall. 
Is this a compound? 只要前面是一般形容词，就不是 compound. So 后面也有重音 Pharyngeal wall. Pharyngeal wall. wall. So when I point there, give me the name, even though it's not written in this particular drawing. Okay, we've got pharynx. Day. 这个这个区域是 pharynx. Pharyngeal wall is 这里 Okay, this is the pharynx. 对，我刚刚没看到。All right, so pharynx 是这个区域 ，pharyngeal wall 是这个东西。咽 ，epiglottis 讲过了。Next as we go down， 有一整个一个区域 ，that's called the larynx。那个就是喉，你们讲的那个喉头。咽是上面 pharynx 跟 pharyngeal wall。larynx 是喉。Everybody larynx。Not lar. Remember, larynx. larynx. All right. I'm telling. I'm teaching you my accent, so we're not going to argue about that. Some people may be picky.、Uh, you're forcing everybody to speak the way you do. Like I said, I want you to learn one consistent accent. So once more, larynx. Larynx. All right. Inside the larynx, 有那么那两片肉，开开合合，开开合合，产生震动，产生 voicing. 那个就是 vocal folds. Everybody, vocal folds. Not folds, fold. Your L O O O folds, folds, and that's written right here. Larynx, this hole 里面啊 vocal folds 写在这里 Okay, so I think we've covered everything, right? So let's try going from bottom to top. The bottom ones we've just learned. All right, go. Larynx. Once more. Esophagus. 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 Okay. Once more from the beginning. Esophagus. Trachea. 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 Good. Epiglottis. Epiglottis. Pharynx, and this is the pharyngeal wall. wall. Good. Okay. And uvula. uvula. Nasal cavity. Nasal cavity. Cavity 有重音 ，OK. Once more. This one's a little harder to remember, but we're going to be using this one a lot, so you'll pick it up fast anyway. Go. Sway is N or NG? N 还是 N 啊 ，right? So it's not ten, ten. Remember, ten 爱。有人说疼爱吗？他疼爱他的孙子，疼爱，疼，疼，疼。Okay. Once more, tongue. Yeah. If you're having trouble with N and N, sorry, N and N, let's work on it another time because that's a big issue in Taiwan English. Once more, this is the. Good. Okay. Let's go from the back. This is the. All right, here. Epiglottis isn't part of the tongue, but it's behind there. And this is the. Uh huh. Okay. And let's see. Have we done these yet? The vocal folds. Yeah, we did that. I think we had. We've covered everything. All right. So now we pretty much know the parts of the vocal tract. These are some of the most basic terms we're going to be using in this course. We're going to move on to. Something else here. We're going to look at the vocal folds and voicing. Now, I'll just read through it quick. The, the sounds of languages can be divided into voiced, and our words for voiced are what? We've got three different expressions in Chinese. The original one you learn in school is 有声 The one I just mentioned to you is 大音 I'll use that most often. Plus 浊 All right, voiced and voiceless. Voiceless is, 无声不带音 okay, or unvoiced. 这两个是都可以互换 It doesn't matter, but in some cases we actually give them different meanings. 先不讲就是跟送不送气有关系可是暂时就 voiceless 跟 unvoiced 应该都是不带音的 Okay.
Vibration of the vocal cords or vocal folds produces a voiced sound. So, if we have a vibration, we have a sound. You can feel the vibrations of your vocal folds by placing your fingers over your throat while saying a sound like z. So, don't say s. You need to voice it and say z. And here we go. Everybody say the z sound. Z. All right. Make sure you're not saying s. We need voicing. Now, if you touch this part of your throat, Lightly, can you feel the vibration? Yang yang, the zhen dong, you know, zzzz. 最明显就是在这里 You can find where your vocal folds are by finding where that vibration, the feeling of vibration, is the strongest. 就是呃，震动的那个感觉是最最激烈的地方，就是你声带所在 Let's try it. Zzzz. Mine is right here, right here. Okay. Let's try another sound, another voiced consonant, a fricative. V, go. V. Okay. Let's try a nasal. Hmm. How about a vowel? Ah. You may feel it more strongly. Say ah 的时候更强烈，对不对？啊啊。Have you ever seen human vocal folds vibrating? Have you ever seen it? Okay. Uh, get ready. Some people get a little grossed out. 有些人会觉得有点恶心 Okay, so just be ready. It can be a bit of a jolt the first time you do. 你第一次看到可能有一点震撼的感觉 Well, get ready. Okay. So at the following two links, you're going to see slow motion videos. 这个不是它真正的震动的速度的影片，它是用 stroboscope. Stroboscope 是一种闪灯。闪灯它会抓到瞬间的动作，所以它刚好在开的时候，它抓到了一幕；闭的时候也抓到了一幕，所以看起来是慢动作。But in one second, usually your vocal folds are vibrating at about say two hundred times per second. 一秒钟会震动两百下左右。That's just 随便讲的，男生可能是一百六，女生可能一百三十五。小孩子，呃，两百三十五，小孩子两百六左右，每个人都有他的范围啊。So 我们就说两百好了。So they'll probably be vibrating at a rate of around two hundred times per per second. We call those cycles per second. CPS, CPS is cycles per second. Cycle 就是一次。是循环 ，but it means a cycle. 它是有个循环 ，but we'll talk about that later. There's another word that we use for times per second, and we call it hertz. 在美国这是个租车公司 ，but hertz 是一个物理学家。He's a very famous physicist who studied sound. His name was Hertz. 所以一秒钟震动几下也可以叫赫，赫兹或赫。In Chinese, it's just usually 赫。所以它现在震动的速率是两百赫。That's how we say it in Chinese. Two hundred hertz. All right. So here we're going to see how it looks, what it looks like. And remember, it's slow motion. <coughs> slow motion, 因为是用闪灯去拍的。Stretched longer 是那个紧绷了，比较长。When it's low, it's shorter. 比较松弛，也比较短。Let's watch that again. Did you know that's what you look like inside? Is it a bit of a shock? It is for most classes. Usually, I have every person. We go around the room and we ask every person to give their gaishang, and they give the same set of answers. First of all, is disgusting. <laughs> Another common one is wonderful, amazing. I just never knew that. Surprising. Is that some of the things that you're feeling? Shocking sometimes. Let's watch it again. Okay. Okay. Amazing, right?、Um, some students had a misconception before they saw a video like this. They thought there was only one piece of flesh opening and closing. 有没有人有过这种念头？声带好像只有一片。Okay, 很诚实的人，不错。Okay, 很多人以为声带只有那么一片，可是是两片并拢，开开合合，开开合合。That's how we make voiced sounds. Um, there are a whole bunch of links. If you want to look, you will find many of them. Okay, there you go. Pretty cool, right? All right, you've got all this stuff for your own viewing pleasure when you have time.
And there are more videos here that you can look at. Okay, Peter Latifog had put this one up. And so you can look at some of the other ones when you have time. And it's also kind of interesting to know how they got these pictures. Can you imagine how they got those videos, how they took them? They didn't use cameras like these. Well, actually, one like these was connected, but it's not going to do it. Okay? <laughs> All right. All right, if you have time, you can look at some of these. It's taking a while to load. Okay, woman Joe Bohasu Jan, you can. There's a special instrument. There we go. Okay, how? Yo Liang Zong, yo. Yo Jiang Ying de Yo Ran de. So one, you just stick, how shall you be young? That's one kind. The other kind is like a snake. So this is one kind, and then there's another kind. Look at the videos yourself, because we really don't have time for everything. Okay. Okay, it's directly to the mouth. This is the I'm going to show you a video just to give you sort of like an introduction to what we're doing. And it's rather old, so we're going to do it. It's rather old, so we're going to do it. It's rather old, so we're going to do it. It's rather old, so we're going to do it. It's rather old, so we're going to do it. It's rather old, so we're going to do it. It's rather old, so we're going to I hope we don't have a problem. Oh, 好像是要save再放。你的口腔是一个共鸣箱, it's a resonant chamber. So, what are our vocal folds doing while we're breathing? When we're breathing, what are our vocal folds doing? Are they doing very much? No, but what is their state? Are they open or closed? Of course, they have to be open so that the air can come through. Okay. All right, the vocal folds are vibrating so fast. That's why they used a stroboscope to film in the other videos that I showed you. All right, let's watch it again. Can you see it opening and closing? You just see fuzziness. There's so many very fine and precise movements. If our conscious brain had to control that, we'd go nuts. Our speech would be a mess. So everything is done by our unconscious brain mostly. That takes care of all of those very fine coordinated movements. Okay, because they are smooth and healthy, the voice sounds pretty smooth and sounds like it's an even pitch, one single pitch. <clears throat> but if you abuse your voice, if you shout a lot, like especially if you go to a ball game, jayo, 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 things like that. You know the woman who sells juice outside our gate here? That happened to her. For a while she was talking like this because her child, so I told her, you know, what she had to do to her voice for a few weeks. She had really had to rest it. So if you shout a lot, in addition, you think that to protect, protect your voice when you have like a sore throat, that you should whisper, right? But whispering really harms your voice. So be careful with whispering. That really hurts your vocal folds. Um, another thing is drinking a lot of coffee and tea, <clears throat> especially strong black tea, because it, uh, it's a di di diuretic. That means So be careful about drinking too much coffee or tea if you really need to take care of your voice, like if you're doing broadcasting or singing or things like that. <clears throat> 
Okay, that's the fantastic voyage. And you can play that yourself if you would like to see it again. But it's pretty amazing, don't you think? Now you know what's going on. At least you have an impression. It's not everything, but you have a pretty good idea of what's going on in there when you're breathing, speaking, singing, doing anything with your voice. <clears throat> OK. Now, the rest of them I'm not going to show in class. You're responsible for all of the links on all of the pages that we cover. This is page 7A. 7A. There are some more really interesting things. For example, maybe you know Porky Pig, Bugs Bunny, Xiao Bai Tu, Nanxie. There is one guy who did all of the voices, most of the voices anyway. Elmer Fudd, Hen Yong Min, Nanxie, Wu, the Sheng Yin, is one guy. His name was Mel Blanc. Okay, this is homework. Finish the links on this page. All right, they're really fun. And there are more videos for you here. Incredible Human Machines and they go National Geographic the Special. So all of this stuff is great fun to watch. Okay, so view it as entertainment and you will learn at the same time. This page is also an assignment, page 7B, talking with just one vocal fold. This is all about a guy named Jack Klugman. He played Oscar in The Odd Couple. So he's the messy guy. And he eventually, I believe it was throat cancer, So he's only got one vocal cord left, or vocal fold. Now remember I said some of you thought we only had one. Could we still speak if we had only one vocal fold, do you think? Well, find out. This is your homework, all right? Page 7B. It's not long, and it's mostly listening. You can also read. There's a story with it that goes with it. It's a radio interview with Jack Klugman about his experience with getting surgery and ending up having to learn how to talk all over again with one vocal fold. So uh, Another thing is, People who have both vocal folds removed, what happens then? Many people who get throat cancer, often it's due to smoking. Bin long often causes cancer, although that can be other parts of the vocal tract. But a lot of people due to smoking, they have to have their entire larynx removed. Have you ever met anybody like that? Okay, well, I did. And he had his larynx removed. He has an open hole in his throat, just as though he had another mouth that he can't close. So he's always got a handkerchief hanging here because people get a little scared when they see a hole in your throat. And when he needs to talk, he uses a special instrument and he puts it over his trachea. And so he can still form sounds with his mouth. vocal cords. how do you think it sounds? Well, not particularly low. low. That's right, exactly. So when he talks, it sounds something like this. It's kind of weird at first, but you get used to it pretty fast. But he was speaking Minayu. <laughs> Watch that yourself. We don't have time for everything in class. It's a web page 7B. And you can hear people using that. Another method that people use to speak if they don't have vocal folds is called esophageal speech. Now, esophagus is 
迟到。Now I said that we don't normally use the esophagus in speech. Is that right? We use it for sending food to our stomachs. Is that right? However, if you have no vocal cords, no, no vocal folds, you can learn to speak with your esophagus. 有食道语 That is even weirder. 所以你要你要运气，准备一个气泡。它上来的时候，然后你就讲话，有点重重声音。It sounds a little bit like that. It is just energy from his stomach to send out a pulse, to make that as a speaking energy to the source. Then he can also make it work. His mouth is also able to make it work. Then he can also 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 make it work. But that way, you don't need to use a gadget. You can speak and be understood, but it takes a lot of training and practice and effort. So that's all on page 7B. Okay, let's see what else we have to do. We have a little time. We need to move ahead in our textbook. We're going back to our textbook. Okay. Next reader. Oops. Are they all on? Okay. D pi. We're going to the back of the room. Okay. Go. Next reader. My name is Yumi. Okay. In order to hear the difference between a voice and a voiceless sound, try saying a long V sound, which will symbolize as V. All right. It sounds just like those videos, right? So now you should sort of be in the right mood for it. Um, I'm going to turn this off so I don't have to keep creating a shadow here. All right. Um, watch the pronunciation of O I. In Taiwan, people make the O part too long in general. I've noticed over many years. They say voiced. Voice is 错，不能说错，可是怪怪的。那个 O 是很短的 ，voiced. Voice. Yeah, don't say voiced. It's voiced. 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 Voice. Voiceless. Voiceless. Voicing. Voicing. 对，短短的 O. Continue. Now compare this with a long F sound. Saying each of them alternately. Good. Each. Everybody. Don't say itch. Itch is. 很痒 Itches. Okay. 不是痒是每一个 Everybody. Each. Go ahead. Saying. Can you do it again? Saying each. Saying each. Um. Saying each of them alternately. Okay, watch the M and them. Them. Good. All right, everybody, let's try it. First F, then V. So from voiceless to voice, voiceless to voice. Everybody, go. Continue. And 那个跳过下一句 Both of this list. Not both. Everybody, both, both. 已经改过很多次。发音日记里面要写，不要念 o， 要念 o o。好几个要念 o both， 不是 both。O, O, 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 O. And let me tell you right away, we use the letter and KK is not the same. In KK, you just write an O, but we're going to add an U behind it. O. And A is the same. KK is only one letter. E. We're going to add a short I after it to make A. So everybody, your original O is now going to be this. Original A is going to be this. So remember that when you take your dictation, 考听写的时候，你要用右边这两个，不要用这个哦。这两个英英文没有。We just have these two diphthongs. Everybody, O, O, A, A, both, both, name, name. Good. Go on. Both of these sounds are formed. Oh, these 不要那么重。These 是虚词。Both of these sounds. Both of these sounds are formed. Once more. These. Lees. Not lees. That's another Taiwan English problem. 字开头的词首的那个 v， 台式英语常念 l。lees, lees. 第一个是吐舌头，大概半公分在外面。然后呢 ，produce voicing. Everybody, v. 加 ees. Lees. Don't say lees. That's totally Taiwan English. 英文没有这样啊。Lees, lees. Again. 可是没有重音哦，不要念得太重。These.、Mm -hmm. 
These sounds are formed. Sounds. It sounds. 整个主词念完了，停顿一下 ，OK. Are formed. 啊，不是啊 ，are. Are、yeah. formed in the same way. Same. same. Everybody, 我刚练的，我们刚练的那个 name 是 a 加 m a 加鼻音，台式英语常会念 nam 或 nam， 要把 a 念得很长很清晰，再加一个 m。Everybody, name. Name. Same. 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 Yeah, don't say sam or sam. It's same. Same、mm -hmm. way in、right? the mouth. Right. The difference between them, the difference between them, between is, them, 第一次很好 Between them is that between be, them, between them, not them, 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 yeah, between、uh -huh. them, the, the, them, right, them, right. Is that V is voiced and is voiceless. You can feel the vocal fold. Vibrations. Vocal fold vibrations. This is a 复合词，然后后面两个名词没有重音。Vocal fold vibrations. You can feel the vocal fold vibrations. Good. In view, if you put your fingertips against your larynx, you can also hear the buzzing of the vibrations in view more easily if you stop up your ears while contrasting. Very good. All right. Two things. First of all, pronunciation. Also, it's not also. It's all. All. Everybody. Also. Also. Good. Also. Also. Next, we're gonna do the f v again.、Uh, exercise again. First, feel your throat. We've already done that. And then stop up your ears. I have to put my book down. So go. F, v, v, v. When you make a voice sound and you've pushed your ears in a little bit, it will sound really loud because you're getting what we call bone conduct conduction. 骨头会传这个声音，听起来很大声。So try f and v while pushing in your ears. V, v. 有没有发现变得很大声 ？Okay, so we've covered that. Um, how much time do we have left? We can still keep going. Mm -hmm. Next reader, please. Say your name before you read. I'm Phoebe. Again. Phoebe. Okay. Okay. The difference between voice and voice. Okay, what's a voice? It's voiced. <laughs> voiced. Yeah. Sorry. The difference between voice and voiceless sounds is often important in distinguishing sounds. In each of the pairs of words, fat, vat, vat, vat. Yeah, fat is. You know fat, but that is 缸像水缸 that. Uh huh. Then uh, thigh. Uh huh. Thigh is 大腿 Thigh. Thigh. And thigh. Thigh. Right. Zoo, zoo. Um, the first consonant in the first word of each pair is voiceless. In the second word, it's voice. It is. It is. Yeah.、Voice. Please read what you see. Don't make contractions where they don't exist, and don't. Take apart contractions. If it says it's, don't say it is. If it says it is, don't say it's. Because very often we use one in one situation and a different one in a different situation. 不能互换，经常是因为节奏或强调的关系 Okay. And to check this for yourself, say just the consonant at the beginning of each of these words. These. Each of these words and try okay, to. Okay, each of these words. This these my ma fan. I've noticed this over the years. 第一个不要念 these， 第二个不要放重音。So each of these words 要清楚，要念 the， 可是不要放重音。Everybody, each of these words. Each of these words. Good. Okay, at the beginning of each of these words. Not this. That's the problem. 很多人会念的太短，念 this 应该是 these。These 快跟没有重音不不大不等于说啊、um, 没有把音念出来。So each of these words, each of these words, yes, good. And try to、yeah. feel and hear the voicings as suggested above. All right. In American English, we say suggested. 英式是没有第一个个 ，suggested 是英式，美式是 suggest.、Uh, sorry, suggested. Suggested 那个第一个 g 跟第二个 g 的那个音不一样。Everybody suggested. Suggested. That's American. Suggested is English. So you know, English people speak more clearly, more elegant. 
，高雅我们还是觉得，可是清晰也不一定。有时候他们很 sloppy。For example， 给你个例子。In American English, how do we say F I G U R E? How do we say that word? And we're going to need that word in this textbook a lot. In American English, it's figure. 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 很清晰，很每个字念得很清楚。But how do you say it in British English? Nobody has it right. All right. You think that they're really careful? In this case, they sound a lot more casual than we do. It's figure. Figure. Yeah, 美式 everybody figure. Figure. British figure. Figure. Okay, so don't suddenly say, "Well, I'm British now for this word," because it's easier. <laughs> All right, so figure. And here, let's go back. Go ahead. As suggested above. Mhm.、Mm、try to find other pairs of words that are distinguished by one having a、uh, one, one, not one, one. A y, but、uh, sorry, that are distinguished by one having not a one. It's one. One, yeah, by、good. one, having a voice and the other having a voiceless consonant. That's good. Okay, having. Watch the ing, everybody. Having. having. Remember, we practiced it last time. So let's try those pairs, everybody. Fat, that. Fat, that. All right. Just say the first sounds of those two words. V. Next pair. Thy, thy. Say that. Thy, thy. Now just the first sounds. V. And next one. Su, zu, just the first sounds. S, z. So here we have three pairs that are voiceless and voiced. Okay, our time is up. Now you have a bunch of web pages to、uh, look at and follow the links and look at the links. In addition, have you read the articles about the echo method, about it and e, and then there are two others. One is about 复合词重音 Have you read those? If you have not, put it in your notebook. You need to read all of those articles. If there's anything you don't understand, please ask in class because a lot of really important things that I repeat, I've been repeating now for more than 20 years. I'm thinking, 可以省一点时间，你们干脆用看的 If there's anything you don't understand, we'll discuss it. So make sure you read all five of those articles. The sixth one will be coming soon. Are there any questions? Do you know what you have to do for homework? Okay, it's mostly web page work this time, but don't forget your Audacity assignment. Some of you have already sent it over to me to the Feather Mountain、uh, email account. And okay, and one more assignment today. Today 正式给你们这个作业 You need to draw twelve drawings of the head with the articulatory organs. And the page you use as the model is. The drawing on page on page twenty seven. Page twenty seven. Use that for your model. One sheet of A four paper. 一边画六个，另一边背面再画六个 Okay. So one sheet of paper, six of these on each side of this mid sagittal view of the head, and. I also want you to draw,、uh, to write in the names of the organs. 大概三个就可以了，其他的不用，写三次就够了 So twelve drawings, three of them have the labels written in. Okay, got it? That's another assignment. I will collect that on Wednesday. 所以这个今天马上做 All clear? That's it. We will see you on Wednesday.